the song for this compilation, this Talk Talk compilation that I'm doing is called Tomorrow Started. It's off of the album It's My Life. I was a Talk Talk fan from their first album all the way up until their last album. So I got the opportunity to see the full trajectory of the beginning of Talk Talk to the end. Actually, I was I wanted to do a short song. I wanted to do a shorter song. There's obviously some shorter songs on their on their uh, first album, the poppier stuff, the more new wave poppy stuff. But I wanted something somewhere in the middle because they started to make this obvious shift towards more avant-garde, you know, jazz, even classical, classically influenced music. And um, also, I needed a song that was gonna be within my ability range, you know, so. Uh... It was safe to say that nobody else was gonna pick that song because it's kind of a sleeper, a sleeper favorite for me. You know, it's not, you know, when people think Talk Talk, they don't, they don't, um, they don't go running to that song. Although it's a great song and, and uh, uh, I'm always a fan of, you know, the songs on albums that aren't, you know, the ones that the general public immediately identifies with. The songs tended to be very constructed and parts would come in and they would disappear and sometimes only one time throughout the whole song. So uh, it made for a very entertaining listen because, you know, you would sit there and as the song is passing before your eyes, you, you have no idea what's going to happen, you know. And a lot of times it did seem, you know, kind of chaotic and you're wondering why things were happening but after repeated listenings you know you realize that these parts they do live together and they live together for a reason I love being confused especially when, when the end result ends up being you know discovering some sort of music that you wouldn't have discovered unless you would have you know opened your mind a little bit and not been too hindered by you know what everybody else the route that everybody else is taking to find new inspiration in music. Even when I was a little kid, listening to a lot of this stuff, I could never identify what was actually making the sounds. I just knew it was a sound. You know, and Talk Talk was actually pretty good at sort of creating their own sounds. And a lot of them sounded like something, you know, that you could have plucked out of, you know, a National Geographic, you know, nature special or something. It was just, there was a lot of, I mean, a lot of it was created synthetically, but, but it was, you know, designed to sound like these organic elements. I don't know what that sound is, but I, uh, I call it an air blast. Um, just a dark white noise that has a tinge of D note in it. Let's see this. They, they, Talk Talk love their Simmons drums, those electronic drums that you hear right, that, uh, they aren't really real acoustic drums used in this song. Um, they might be, but they're, I think they're triggers. And so that was another part of my addition to the way this song ends up sounding is the fact that I, I, I decided to play a real drum set on the song and mix it in with the electronic elements, which is something that they did on, on occasion a lot actually, and something that I enjoy doing myself, blending the electronic drums and the acoustic drums. As enjoyable as this whole process was, working on this song, I did struggle the most with the bass playing. I really did have to extend my bass playing boundaries um, to a new level. And I, and I didn't even, you know, I didn't even really come close. There's some of the parts in the song where I was uh, trying to emulate it, but there was some portions of it were just like way beyond my ability so the main keyboard melody in the song which just this was another one of my uh, another one of my personal embellishments was 
I ended up creating a sound. In the list of tracks, I named it the Trash Melody. Uh, I don't know, it's just, I, I, I wanted to make it a little dirtier than, than the original version. The guitar part in the song is pretty, it's, it's pretty unique sounding. And the electric guitars are usually treated pretty heavily to the point where you can't really tell if, if it's synthesizer or guitar. And I, I got it as close as I possibly could. But if you can just imagine, I, uh, I had to plug pretty much like every one of those, I pretty much had to plug every one of those pedals <laughs> together <laughs> to get something remotely even close to uh, what is the version on the original song. But um, I don't know. It was a... It was an enjoyable challenge. So I'd have to say one of the most uh, one of the most recognizable traits of Talk Talk and all of their music is Mark Hollis's voice. It takes about you know two or three or four of my voices stacked together to get the same density of. Uh, of his voices, but I'm gonna I'm gonna approach it pretty straightforward. I'm talking about all this right now because I haven't recorded the vocals yet. I'm just gonna sing them pretty, pretty straightforward, and try not to sound like I'm sounding like him. I'm just gonna try to sound like me singing a talk to him song. And how much I actually dread the uh, camera in the studio getting the singer doing the vocals. See my eyes, tell me I'm not lying I'm just the first that you take All the reasons everybody some little ticking noise or or some heavily treated guitar or just you know or some one little you know percussion part that that comes in and just exists for reasons that you can't really figure out at the time after a while you start piecing it all together and you realize these were very complex and very well thought out arrangements when the song was all said and done um, you know, everything was pretty essential. Mm -hmm. 